The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said, and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. So as some of you may remember, last year, last September in fact, I decided that I was going to visit the Atlantic provinces in Canada. I had never been to Newfoundland, which is how I learned you pronounce it up there, Nova Scotia, or Prince Edward Island, and I thought that that would be a good opportunity to visit. This was especially the case because then I was doggyless, and visiting Newfoundland required an eight-hour ride on a very doggy, unfriendly ferry. And all went pretty well for a while. I got into Newfoundland, and I visited the remains of a 10th century Viking settlement on the very tip of the island. And it was a really interesting place, and I had a great time. But that same day, the Hurricane Center predicted that Hurricane Fiona was going to come and make a direct hit on the Atlantic provinces. And my return ferry got canceled. The hurricane wasn't that bad where I was, and I had strategically planned to ride out the hurricane in a hotel that was right across the street from a microbrew, so I thought that was a pretty good plan. But as I was watching TV and seeing what was going on, I thought, I'm not going to be able to finish this trip because after the hurricane came through, 90% of the power was out on Prince Edward Island and 75% was out in Nova Scotia. So there was absolutely no point in trying to do the rest of the things that I'd hoped to do so I got in the car when I could get on the ferry, and I just simply drove home. So this September, Phoenix offered to help me finish the trip. So I created another trip plan that incorporated many of the things that I had missed doing last year. And I added a few things that I knew would be particularly doggy appropriate, like checking out some of the dog-friendly beaches on Prince Edward Island. And mercifully, we didn't need to travel on any more ferries which was particularly good because our trip was this end also bookended by hurricanes and tropical storms. We got there just as Hurricane Lee was coming back and we drove through the tail end of the last tropical storm coming home. Now normally, I am very committed to doing all the things that I have planned on my schedule. I, I, I'm very kind of OCD about this. I must do all of these things. And I, I try to make sure that I do all these things that I got excited about and I planned very carefully that I went to do. And yet, there were times, particularly on this trip, where I changed my mind in the middle of the trip. Often, that was because I had Phoenix along with me. Despite all the planning I had done, I sometimes realized that it would be better to do something else. So one of these times was while we were on Prince Edward Island, and some of you may have seen this on my Facebook page, they are famous there for lobster suppers. And one of the places I wanted to go was one of these great big huge restaurants, which basically is a lobster supper buffet. They give you not only this big one and a half pound lobster, but they give you a buffet of rolls and mussels and soups and desserts, big dessert things. And it would, I was, I, for two years I've been thinking, I really want to go see this thing. They grew out of, they actually grew out of um, church fundraisers. That's how, that's how it started. But there are these, these big, uh, big restaurants now. But when I got there, and as I started to think about that, I realized, you know, all of these places are places where I could not bring Phoenix along. I would have to leave him in the car or in the hotel while I went along. 
And as I thought about it, I came to the conclusion that I would much rather have Phoenix with me than eat lobster without him. So we found a great dockside restaurant where we could both sit outside and Phoenix could chase the seagulls. We had a great lobster supper, which did include plenty of other food. They even had a doggy menu that you could, you could use. And there was a great harbor walk for us to take together after dinner. It was a great experience for both of us, and I am glad that I changed my mind. In today's gospel reading, Jesus also talks about changing your mind. Actually, the verb that Jesus or that Matthew uses to record what Jesus says is the word, the Greek word metanoia, which does literally mean to change your mind. But usually in the New Testament, this word is translated as repent. So every time you hear repent or repentance, it's this word. Now, both of those translations are good, but both can be problematic for us in English. Repent, of course, is not a word that most of us use in daily life. And when we hear it outside of the Bible, it is generally full of judgment and used in the context of some kind of pious drivel. You should repent or somebody coming up to us and telling us something like that. So that's not a very helpful translation. And change your mind can also be a bit problematic because it often sounds like a purely intellectual exercise where we simply substitute one idea for another idea. Huh, I thought this, now I'll think this other thing. But the Greek word for change your mind means more than that. And Jesus illustrates this with the short parable he tells about this father and the two sons who are asked to go and work in the vineyard. The first one says, no, I won't go. But later, he changes his mind and he goes. What does change your mind really mean? For the first son, changing his mind was not simply an intellectual substitution of one idea over another. Instead, changing his mind meant that the first son considered the situation in the vineyard and how it might be different than just a short time ago. After all, if it's harvest time right now and you don't go right now, you miss out on the benefits of a whole year's worth of work. Maybe things had changed from the way they were the last time he really took a look. Maybe things were different now and he hadn't considered that. You know, when I was planning my trip, I knew that I'd have Phoenix along, but I changed my mind about what we'd eat or where we'd eat because having him along changed the situation from the way it was just a year ago when I had been planning that trip. For this son, changing his mind meant that he valued the relationship with his father more than the difficulty of the work. I mean, I think it's a mistake to ever read this parable and imagine that the son suddenly decided, hey, you know what? I would really enjoy the difficulty or irritation of going to work in the vineyard, standing out in the hot sun, and getting eaten by the mosquitoes. He won't. But he loves his father more than he hates the work. And so he changes his mind because emotionally he cares more about his father than the irritation to himself. You know, there were several times on my trip that I did things that I honestly was not interested in doing. There was this one, and I will get in trouble with all the English majors for this, but there's a, there's a famous uh, set of, of uh, stories, Anna of Green Gables, and it's based on this um, this author's childhood in, on Prince Edward Island, and they have a whole thing set up on Prince Edward Island with all of these things you can go if you're big into these stories. I am not into these stories. But the doggy app said that they had all these trails and places that, so I thought, well, but Phoenix would like that. And so we went to this place, and I'm still not into these, into these stories, but I watched how much he enjoyed walking around all these trails and going through all this stuff. I enjoyed how much he enjoyed it so much that I was willing to do it, and I'm glad we did it because he enjoyed it, and it wasn't just about me. And that's what the, second, that's what the first son does in this parable. He says, this is more important to my dad, so I'm going to do it. And most importantly, changing his mind, this first son, it meant that he actually lived differently because of the decision he made. This is a real reason why change your mind sometimes lacks meaning for us. It can simply be an intellectual exercise. But because the first son changes his mind, he lives differently. 
He may not have even announced to his father, <clears throat> Father, I have changed my mind. Now I'm... It doesn't say he does that at all. He simply started doing something else. He lived in a new way. And often, it's by living differently that new things are possible for you and for others. And it's this kind of change in your mind that Jesus is inviting people into, a change that makes a difference in the lives of others. This is what actually ticks Jesus off about the, the, the people who are asking him about these things that he's doing, because he says, look, all of these people who before didn't have any connection to God now start to have connection to God. And yet, even after you see it, you don't want to change because the purpose of change is not for you to have a different kind of set of ideas in your brain, but the purpose of changing is to invite others into the good news of God. And that's what Jesus is calling people to do. That's what the change is all about. Changing your mind means more than substituting one idea for another. But it's also important not to read this parable simply as a great smackdown of Jesus' opponents. Jesus did not tell this parable or any other so that we could be entertained by Jesus telling off his opponents. Instead, this parable is for us too. And it's important for us because God is always calling us to consider when we might also need to change our mind so that we can live into the new things that God is doing in our lives. And sometimes for us, that also means considering how things are different than the way they were perhaps only a short time ago. And this means more than simply doing what, frankly, I do a lot, bemoaning the stuff that we don't like, as the chief priests and the elders did when they saw Jesus developing a new kind of community. And as we sometimes do when we bemoan how things are different after COVID or how mean and polarized our society seems to have become. It's really easy to sit back and go, yeah, I see how things have changed and I'm just miserable about it. Instead, changing your mind means also actively looking for the good things that are happening even in the midst of the bad stuff and considering new opportunities that may not have been there even last year. Part of what I realized got in my way and what gets in my way a lot and maybe yours too is that it's easy to see the opportunities you used to have say five years ago, and those aren't there anymore. It's harder to look around and go, but wait, now maybe there are some new things that I could do now that I couldn't have done before. Maybe there are other options, even if it means you know, going someplace that I had previously said, I'm not going to go there. But maybe that is an option God's putting in front of us. For us, too, changing our minds means reevaluating what really matters and who really matters in our lives. I mean, this is what Jesus was calling people to do when he asked them to reevaluate what God was worth to them in their lives and to consider the value of people who maybe they didn't consider valuable before. That's what's going on in the context of this story. Aren't these people valuable too? Consider what really matters and who really matters. And for us, sometimes this means asking what matters enough to put time and effort and money into. What used to matter that maybe doesn't matter so much anymore? And how might God be calling me to change my mind by reevaluating who and what is most important in this moment? That sometimes is what changing your mind is about. And of course, for us too, one of the most important things about changing your mind is being willing to actively live in a new way. The hard part for many of the people Jesus spoke to, was not grasping a different idea. Some of these ideas that we attribute to Jesus as being brand new ideas are ideas that sometimes when you look back in the Old Testament were there all along. It was actually changing how people lived with others. This is what makes things difficult for people in the Bible. It's what makes things difficult for us, right? So, you know, like things like diet and exercise routines become hard. Why? Not because we don't intellectually understand the need for them. Not because we don't even emotionally feel like, oh, I gotta do something different here. But rather because it means we have to actually change the routine. We have to actually work each day at living differently. And sometimes for us too, living differently is the key to changing, to really changing our minds and living more fully into the kingdom of God that Jesus is bringing about in our lives. And for us, 
Sometimes changing our minds is done simply by small acts of practicing kindness and generosity and forgiveness each and every day. Changing your mind is more than just substituting one idea for another, and it's harder than simply modifying your trip itinerary. But it's what Jesus calls us to each day. It's often hard to do, but Jesus promises, promises us that each day we get a different chance. And often we live into the opportunity of the new chance by looking more closely for new opportunities that God is giving us that maybe we didn't see before. We live into that opportunity by reevaluating what and who matters most. And we live into that opportunity by regularly practicing the kinds of behaviors that make the kingdom of God a reality, not just in our lives, but in the lives of others. 